Delano Aiden here, and I have a special treat for you, but first a little backstory. I was playing StarCraft a while ago, and while swapping discs out, I put it into a DVD case, and trying to get it out of the DVD case, it snapped. Now, it's really not so much a big deal now, because I just entered the key code onto my uh, Battle.net account, which is like a Blizzard version of Steam, and as you can see, I am a total Blizzard whore. And I didn't really need a disc copy anyway. But that got me thinking about my other games, specifically one that can't be entered onto the Battle.net and is far too old, so I kind of wanted to record it for posterity. The original Diablo, which I have had for however long this has been out. I've lost the package, I've lost the manual, all I've got left is this disc and I want to save it. So I'm starting a series where I will uh, episodically play the game and I will have commentary. So I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Diablo Episode 1. Before we get started, I'm going to note that I've made a warrior this time. I only ever played Sorcerer back in the day, so this is going to be a new experience for me. So, looking at the abilities, we have Repair, which repairs durability, but also lowers the max durability, so it's usually better to just pay for repairs. Now we've also got just basic RPG character stats, you know, nothing unusual. We got some mana, some health, and yeah, one ability so far. And the thing I hate the most, you have to carry your gold. And each stack doesn't uh, increase indefinitely. After you reach a certain point, you start carrying more. Kind of fellow drinking peace? I know you got your own ideas, and I know you're not gonna believe it. That weapon you got there, you just ain't no good against those big brutes. Oh, I don't care what Griswold said. They can't make anything like they used to in the old days. As I was saying, once you reach so much gold into a pile, you need to start another pile. Which means if you get a lot of gold, that's going to take up a lot Hello, of space in your friend. inventory. Stay a while and listen. Ogden has owned and run the Rising Sun Inn and Tavern for almost four years now. He purchased it just a few short months before everything here went to hell. He and his wife, Garda, do not have the money to leave, as they invested all they had in making a life for themselves here. He is a good man with a deep sense of responsibility. So if you get a lot of gold, it's going to fill up your inventory. How many games punish you for being rich? Thank goodness you've returned. Much has changed since you lived here, my friend. All was peaceful until the Dark Riders came and destroyed our village. Many were cut down where they stood and those who took up arms were slain or, or dragged away to become slaves, or worse. The church at the edge of town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. The screams that echo in the night are inhuman, but some of our townsfolk may yet survive. Follow the path that lies between my tavern and the blacksmith's shop to find the church and save who you can. Perhaps I can tell you more if we speak again. Good luck. Instead of using your repair skill, you want to oh, see this what guy. Can I do for you? Well, I have to practically smuggle in the metals and tools I need from caravans that skirt the edges of our damned town. That witch Adria always seems to get whatever she needs. If I knew even the smallest bit about how to harness magic as she did, I could make some truly incredible things. As you guessed, I'm just walking around and talking to everybody before I actually get into the game. Now, I had to start the game a few times just so I could get this little effect in the well, which lets me the, know that there's a quest coming on the second level. What ails you, my friend? 
I have made a very interesting discovery. Unlike us, the creatures in the labyrinth can heal themselves without the aid of potions or magic. If you hurt one of the monsters, make sure it is dead, or it very well may regenerate itself. And you may have caught before I talked to the drunk that I tried to see if I could get the mini-map, which you can't do in town. Good day. How may I serve you? Ogden and his wife have taken me and my grandmother into their home and have even let me earn a few gold pieces by working at the inn. I owe so much to them and hope one day to leave this place and help them start a grand hotel in the east. I thought I'd just take the time in this first episode to walk around town, talk to everybody, let you see the size of things. Since back in the day, this was a pretty impressive game, but I don't really think that it's held up well over time. It's very, very claustrophobic in comparison to just Diablo 2. And I'm only coming over here because of the little peg leg boy, Wirt. Aww. He's a little gambling man, but hell if I'm going to give him 50 gold now. I've only got a hundred. Barnum, now there is a man with serious problems, and I know all about how serious problems can be. He trusted too much in the integrity of one man, and Lazarus led him into the very jaws of death. Oh, I know what it's like down there. So don't even start telling me about your plans to destroy the evil that dwells in that labyrinth. <laughs> Just watch your legs. Bada psh. For those keeping score, the gossip has just been characters talking about other characters. And I guess that works for establishing what each person does, having other people talk about them. But this really does show early, early Blizzard game design. Now I think there's only one character left, so now I'm just going to walk around the rest of the town. Uh, let you get an idea of the size of the place. See up here we have the actual dungeon, but I'm just going to pass right by that. And next that's the graveyard, keep going, and we're about to pass by the service entrance to the second tier of the dungeon, which is not yet open. And uh, excuse me for a moment while I indulge myself. It's a cow, all right. Sorry, you can't have a Blizzard game without clicking r repeatedly on random animals. All right, the last character, the witch, who lives off I all on her own, and she is important for recharging staves. The hand, the heart, and the mind can perform miracles when they are in perfect harmony. The healer Pepin sees into the body in a way that even I cannot. His ability to restore the sick and injured is magnified by his understanding of the creation of elixirs and potions. He is as great an ally as you have in Tristram. And she is pretty much the reason why I'm not playing a sorcerer again this time through. The Sorcerer starts out with the Recharge Staff ability, kind of like my Repair ability, except when you recharge a staff, it lowers the max number of charges. And recharging it from her costs an ass load. So you quite often end up with uh, an empty staff, and mana does not recharge as you stand still you have to actually level up or use a potion, so you can pretty much gimp yourself very early on in the game. Please, listen to me. The Archbishop Lazarus, he led us down here to find the Lost Prince. The bastard led us into a trap. Now everyone is dead, killed by a demon he called the Butcher. Avenge us! Find this Butcher and slay him, so that our souls may finally rest. And we have a quest! which I think is an optional one. Please, 
kind of like the well, it's not always in every game. So if you don't get it the first time, you kind of have to try again. And I'm kind of running out of time here, so I'm just going to wrap up this episode. March my ass back down to Deckard Kane, the pimp daddy of Diablo. Seriously, this guy is awesome. And he's the only character to appear in all three Diablo games now. I'm not counting the expansion as its own game. I do mean Diablo 3, he returns. So thanks for watching and see you next time. I am giddy, I am tingling to see this throng, this horde before me. Those of you who are tightly gripping your Herodric staff, please raise your voices.